अब नेक्स्ट थैंक यू अब नेक्स्ट डिजिटल नेटिव्स जनरेशन सेव जनरेशन सी द coming after the millennials the dreaded millennials uh, we have a group of experts that will talk about engaging with them and leading the pack my dear friend susan carlin please come on up yes drinking please come on up round of applause please muchas gracias guapo isn't jose cute Jose, are you single? Hi. <laughs> okay, hi everybody. I'm Sue Carlin. I'm with Fast Company, and I'm going to let my illustrious panel introduce themselves because they'll do a much better job than I. So go for it, Evangeline. I am Evangeline. The company that I run is called Kobe. Fortunately or unfortunately, I don't sell beef. Neither am I from Japan. Kobe stands for Kobe, which is word of mouth in Chinese. And what we do essentially is we connect we connect the brands to influencers. So we are in the field of advertising technology. So I I said Evangeline's site is I mean um, a company is like a matchmaking site for everyday influencers, like instead of celebrities and brands and advertisers. So think matchmaking, but with less aggravation. Okay. Next up, Ali. Hi everyone, Ali Mirza. I'm with a company called Affluential. So it's a play on the influential affluent, if you like. Uh, it's very Asian Pacific focused. Uh, we do a lot of data, information, consulting for uh, a wide range of brands across verticals. So we do work with, for example, you know, De Beers, Tiffany, Michael Kors, uh, Shangri-La, BMW, and they're all looking at this uh, new segment of consumers that are in Asia, which have a lot of wealth. Uh, looking for new brands and purchases, and so we look at a lot of the data and analytics for those those kind of uh, those brands. Wait, wait, wait! Can you get a discount on Tiffany items? Sure. All right, everyone, <laughs> see Ali afterwards. Okay. <laughs> um, next up, King. Hi, my name is King. So I run a company called Salty Customs, and uh, we print T-shirts. Essentially, we are apparel revolutionaries. Uh, we aim to be at the forefront of innovation in the apparel industry. What that means is, uh, think about customized apparel. You can actually do it on your phone, on the go, on your website, or even call us and uh, make shirts with us face to face. So uh, we work with clients like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and uh, we ship all around the world. And it's usually in a larger scale, right? In mass manufacturing. So a little bit of my background: uh, organizational behavior and finance. That's where I uh, thrive or have spent a lot of my time on. Yeah, so King is bilingual. He speaks both corporate and startup. <laughs> okay, so he's going to be translating. And I'm his customer too. Thank you. Thank you. Nice <laughs> T-shirts. Are you? Yeah, I am. Oh, I am. Okay. See Thank my you. team over there. Yeah. They're all wearing something. Oh, nice. 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 So we're modeling. Oh, yeah. we're, we're modeling two companies at once. Stuff okay. Stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to do is. Um, Generation Z, because I'm American, or Generation Z, which everyone else says, but since I'm American, I'm just going to butcher the language anyway. Um, uh, let's define that first, because depending on what website or what Wikipedia entry you look at, it's defined differently. So, roughly ages 14 to 23, is that good? Sort of. At 95, post 95. Okay, and and. Um, uh, they tend to have a more entrepreneurial style than their elders. Mm -hmm. So, um, anything else that you want to add about uh, like the definition of Generation Z? I think it's uh, it's important to look at this segment because I mean we've done a lot of research uh, in a, into, into you know the, the emerging youth of Asia Pacific, and uh, there's something that we coined Generation AAA, which encompasses a bit just the starting point of. Uh, 18 to 35, so we just get a bit of the, the Gen Z. And why we call them Generation AAA is because they're affluent, aspirational, and ambitious. They all want to get out there, they want to make a mark, they want to prove themselves. And so those are some of the underlying DNA characters uh, of this, this segment of group. And you know, with Gen uh, ZZ, if you like, uh, what's important about them is, I mean, they're almost, uh, you know, 30% of the world's population. So they're definitely uh, very 
important uh, consumer base that brands are going to deal with? But most generations, when they're starting out right after school, want to try to make their mark in the world, but uh, Gen Z are digital natives. Yeah. So they're doing it with technology. We did it with paper. Which Has anyone seen this? It's, I'm old school. Okay. Um, so did you want to talk about, you said that you had a report that... Yeah. So you so, speak about the analytics for a while. Sure. I mean, so what we did was we did an interesting exercise uh, what we try and do is we bring in uh, interns every year into our company and uh, typically these interns are at Gen Z and uh, this time we wanted to do a research report around Gen Z so we wanted the interns uh, under the supervision of our, our directors go out there and produce this, this research report and so they went out there, they interviewed about 150 people uh, in their group, asked them you know, uh, interesting questions about you know, what's on their mind, what kind of brands are they buying, what's interesting to them, try to get a real feel for the psyche of them. And it was really interesting that the fact is 95% of them are all on social media, right? So social media is huge for them. Uh, they're all on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, because privacy is very important. Snapchat, you know, you, you take the picture, it's gone. So that's, that's a big uh, source of social media that they're using. YouTube, so they're looking at all these different information uh, avenues for themselves where they find uh, you know, uh, messages about brands. Traditional media, like you said, is pretty much out of the, the box for them. They're not so much on it. Um, they're looking for relevant content. They're looking for things that uh, you know, appeal to their values and their core. Uh, they're looking for experiences, they're looking um, for, you know, things that uh, match their DNA, if you like, right? It's, it's all about their DNA, it's about authenticity. So the brand's really got to stand for that. Uh, social responsibility, for example, another very important aspect. Uh, so these were some of the highlight trends. I'm sure, you know, my fellow panelists will have interesting comments as well. And I can take you a little bit about some of the brands that they were looking for. So for this Gen Z population, you know, uh, when they buy brands, they're looking for affordability, they're looking for quality, uh, they're looking for good pricing. And uh, what we found was H&M, you know, Nike, Adidas, Uniqlo, these were brands that were coming up very high on their wish list and their purchasing list because obviously these, uh, these were brands that were resonating with all of their, uh, their desires. I have to interrupt this panel for a very important announcement. We have a new panelist. You made it. Yeah, you made it. Right. That's okay. Woo. Hello. Okay. Hi. Everyone, this is Darius Chung. Da Darius, uh, do you have a note from your mother? This is why you're late. Sorry. That's okay. I said, did you have a note from your mother about being late? Okay. So Darius is the CEO of 99.co. And why don't you just do a little spiel about who you are, what your company is? Sure. Um, I run 99.co. It's a property. Um, search company. Uh, we help people sell property essentially. Uh, we, have, we work with lots of agents and we see a tremendous flux of new kind of agents which is Gen Z. Um, our audience on the other hand are quite old. They're not really Gen Z in terms of property Be buyers. Be careful so using the O word Darius. Some of us are rapidly approaching that. Oh I'm, I'm past old compared to our agents. <laughs> Tread uh, very you are careful. totally fine in the safe zone. Oh God bless you. <laughs> so, um, all right, so you missed all of the pyrotechnics and the upfront, so we're, we're just going to, so what I wanted to do is ask um, the three CEOs to talk a little bit about um, how they, how you each have engaged um, your consumers, Gen, uh, Gen Zers, and because my sense is, you know, my generation, were sort of told what to buy and here's why and you guys are more about um, being more seamless and interactive you know your your consumers don't want to be hit over the head they want to sort of discover things for the, on their own so I was wondering if you could talk about various uh, challenges that you've encountered and how you overcome them with your um, with your customers yeah I think Eventually, yeah, go for it. Okay, um, a big reason why Kobe is doing influencer marketplace is because a lot of the advertising that we are seeing on social media 
the Gen Z or the Gen Z, they are not entirely reacting or trusting these advertisements and they trust a lot more what their friends say and what their families say and the opinions of their Indian chiefs in their space really matter to their purchase decisions. That's why influencers really work very well in that sense. Wait, advertisers don't tell the truth? <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> So, so I was going to get to that. So one thing I think why um, everyday influencers make a lot of sense is because of one word that you, you just mentioned is authentic city. Because they, they can smell you from a mile away at any point of time that you are trying to say something a little bit less than authentic, they can smell you and they would just shun you. And on social media, the reactions are so public. So we have had, I mean, there are tons of examples of how brands have been trying to, to do different different things in an inauthentic way and just got backfired. So I think authenticity is the key thing when we are trying to reach out to our consumers and especially the Gen Z. You need to pour who, who you really are and be vulnerable to who you really are to, to share with them that message you're bringing across. Okay. Yeah. And, um uh, King, I wanted to ask you, since what, what have you found when you uh, go and speak to corporations or having come from that world, what is the number one mistake that they're making yeah. with, with respect to understanding Gen Z? Gotcha. So I think the first mistake that we all make, and I'm guilty of, of this as well, is that uh, we think that Gen Zs are not as hardworking as the rest of us. We think that they don't have the mentality to go in uh, to war, like like we do, or like our forefathers do, you know, like people liken business to war. We're in a constant state of war, and that's what they say. So we think that these Gen Zs are not up for it, but the truth of the matter is that they believe in the concept just as much as you and I. The difference is that they do not believe in the outcome. If I was a Gen Z, I don't believe in dying anymore. Like back in the day, if I were to follow my commander to war, yeah, I would die in the battlefield with you. But today as a Gen Z, I want to go to war. But I don't believe in dying with you because of the technological advancements that we have around us. We could send drones to fight for us. We could send, like, they, that's how they think. So I think one of the key mistakes that, uh, that I've made myself is uh, to undermine uh, some of my, my teammates and my colleagues to think that, uh, you know, you don't know enough or, or what not, or you're not hungry enough, or, you know, you're not, you're, you're not made for this, but that's just that's wrong. So how do you bring that to your company? Uh, so in our organization, we, well, like most of our organizations, we try to go away, get a, get a professional moderator to come in, a team coach, so to speak, and we address these problems. And, and we, we, we draw a big elephant and we put it in the room and we say, hey, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And then we put all the little points on, on, the, on the wall. Everybody has a post-it, they do that. And then for the rest of the quarter, we try to fix one of the problems one more time. So we try to listen to them. And we also try to get them to listen to us. Give first, receive later. And uh, I think that will just generally work out. It just worked out for us. OK. And uh, Darius, how about you? What have you noticed in, because um, all right, here's the thing. There's lots of um, property databases. Um, ways of looking things up, but you're you're specifically thinking of Gen Z attracting Gen Z to your database. So how are you doing that? Uh, actually, I will correct that. We wait. Are you are you inferring that I might be wrong? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but what what our intention is? What our intention is, and this is is not just our intention, but what our observation. Uh -huh. um, so what where we found the most success actually there is this entire. So uh, I'm just going to put it out there, right? I think most people don't trust brokers a whole lot, real estate agents, mm -hmm. right? It's one of the, if you look at the ranking of trust level on real estate brokers, uh, it's very, very low compared to many professions. But I think it's changing. And our job is to help the heroes for the tomorrow shine. Um, and I think there's a new breed of young real estate brokers who are behaving entirely differently. They are, like what you said, authentic. They are unfiltered. And I give you three traits of what they do that makes 
their, their marketing of property is so unique and because they put up listings on our site and they talk to our customers through the site and so on. So we can observe this. And there are three things, three phrases very interesting. One, um, they have an opinion. If you engage a traditional broker, chances are he will tell you this is good, this is good, how about that, that's also good, everything is good. Bye, bye, bye. Right? The new age agents say, no, this is good for X, Y, Z. The reason this is really not quite so good and this is good if you're looking for this, but generally this, these are the bad points. So they're unfiltered, very authentic about their opinion. And it's natural to them and it works for them. It comes across sincere, it comes across as real. And I think this has been effective for them. Uh, and I think the second thing is that they're very upfront about their own agenda. Very transparent. They say, yes, if you buy a property, this is commission I make, this is how much I'll make. You know, if I make this much of money, I'll, you know, I'll treat you to the end. Very clear, upfront about it. They don't try to hide it. They don't, they don't try to have a hidden agenda anywhere. So I think that has been tremendously effective. And the third thing is, they are very out there about, and I agree with you, which is, they really are out there to, to fight for their own success. They actually are, in half our business in Indonesia, what we actually see is this tremendous energy Young people just out there to find new ways, learning new skills, learning new knowledge, learning new ways to make money, and they're out there doing it. Uh, I think it's I don't know, for the audience. I think it's, the, the the real potential is how do you tap on that? So when you're trying to attract employees, do you have to run a Gen Z company differently than uh, uh, for older people? I, now I'm using the old word, but I can. I'm allowed to. Okay. So, um, for example, horizontal management style where ideas can come from anywhere versus, you know, hierarchical where they have to trickle up. Um, having corporate social responsibility, having a more fluid workplace, that sort of thing. Do you guys want to talk about that? Yeah. Sure. Um, I think in the past, okay, for the older people. <laughs> <laughs> I have them all trained. Okay. You like that? <laughs> let's, let's call it for the non-Gen Zs. Okay. Okay. All right. Structure could be a good the, word. The Jurassic generation. <laughs> <laughs> so for this generation, uh -huh. uh, structure could be a good word, which means this company is structured. It's a, it's a great company. They have you know, departments, they have got uh, career progression plans. It's a good word. Generally, you know, the word structure is a good word to the older generation. But when it comes to the Gen Z, structure can have a, a possibility of being not so good a word. Because structure becomes rigid, not so flexible, um, not so imaginative, not so creative. So in fact, structure can become a negative word when it comes to the Gen Z. And Gen Z, you can even use the lack of structure to even attract them to join you. So I think that is, that is actually one interesting thing. Not all. I'm yeah. a Gen Z trapped in a boomer body. Right. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> no, it's not trapped in a boomer body. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, bless you. Bless you, I'm getting so many compliments. OK. So, um, uh, there's, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ali, did you yeah. want to... Uh, so, just to make the Gen Z feel to... old, we can talk about, you know, um, Generation Alpha, which is the seven-year-olds and below, who are all sitting on their iPads and, and tablets and restaurants with oh, their parents. Oh, they come out of the that. womb. Like they're the sitting YouTube on these group. tablets, right? So, yeah. we won't get into that, but, you know, that's the next one to look out for. <laughs> you know, they're, they're going to be... Um, Have you... Do you have any analytics on how, to, how, how companies, Gen Z companies are being... Well, I talk from my personal ex experience. You know, why would a company, like, you know, most of these... Gen Z want to go work in Facebook and Google and Airbnb and you know these kind of large technology firms. Uh, why would they be interested in a data analytics and you know, consulting information services business like ours? Uh, and we get interns from uh, great universities. You know we get them from Yale, we get them from you know um, INSEAD, uh, SMU locally. Uh, you know Cornell. We just hired a guy from Cornell who came in as an intern and now he's a, he's been given an, an, an opportunity to be full time. So it's for them, it's about being able to prove themselves. It's about having flexibility to you know, take a project on and run with it. It's about recognition. Uh, it's about travel. If they have a chance to travel, they love it. Uh, you know, so travel comes up always high on all of their rankings. And in terms of, you know, if, if I start making my money, the first thing I want to do is travel. And we have all the destinations that they want to go to, Japan, Hong Kong, Taipei. Uh, you know, be amazed at the, at the places because that pulls in from the side of experience. 
dining, travel experiences. So you need to have an environment and、um, not that rigidity of a structure. So you no longer have to join the army to see the world. No, join、That's、us.、Right. <laughs> join a Gen Z startup. Okay.、Um, audio. We're getting feedback.、Um, King. Yeah. So what what is it?、Uh, we have、um, one dirty word is structure.、Yeah. What's your favorite dirty word? Yeah. So I want to weigh in on structure a little bit. So let's face it, we're all in here to make money, right? We're all here to yes provide value and at the same time get remunerated for it, right? Who are we kidding? We're trying to make money. That's that's what we're in business. So how are you ever going to run a, a ship if you don't have structure? We need structure.、But、I think the thing about hierarchy and structure is that. Now take yourself back to the very first day that you came into the society.、Uh, did somebody teach you how to read the organizational structure? Did somebody hold your hand and walk you through the process of why reporting is important in this way? Somebody did, and then you made mistakes along the way, and then your team made mistakes along the way. the The, the purpose of a structure is so that you don't make the same mistakes again. Now I, I think that、uh, these these Gen Z or A lot of my peers included. They're misconstrued because nobody taught them. They just said, "Hey, here's the structure. Follow it." So they don't actually know how to work around it. So a structure is kind of like a parameter. Hey, you can do whatever you want. You can build around the parameter. Just don't get out of it because we've been out before and we've got bitten before and we've then learned how to do it. So the idea is to do it. have the same kind of transparency that your products are having. With your company, saying we do it this way because of X, Y,、uh-huh. and Z, so, so we, then people can go, ah, okay, now、right. I get it.、Uh, so I feel about I feel the thing about us today is that we live in a very fast-paced world. Information is everywhere.、Um, we read so much, we watch so many videos, and we learn so much. So we forget to slow down to just explain. So I have this note to self. I always tell myself because we run an organization with with proper structure and hierarchy. But I said. If ever this org- this organizational structure is not helping you, then it's not working. Come talk to me. We need to make a change right now. Okay. And that's a huge difference between a startup and corporate, a Gen Z company、I、and think, corporate. I think maybe yes. Maybe yes. Darius, I don't want you to feel left out. <laughs> Thanks. So what what pearls of wisdom can you add to the conversation? Thanks for inclusiveness, and I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> While we're on that topic,、uh, my favorite dirty word is fear, and the opposite of that is courage.、Um, and、uh, so I don't profess that we do it very well. We still struggle with it every time. But、uh, to give you an example, I think the the one of the things that we believe as a company is that companies and organizations and cultures ought to have a voice, ought to have a belief. Recently, we publicly supported、um, this、uh, this initiative called the Pink Dot. It is a movement to、uh, to promote inclusiveness for LGBT rights、uh, here in Singapore.、Um, and there are a lot of people disagree with it. When we ask our advisors and so on, they say they don't do it. It's, you know, you're going to offend a lot of people, including your customers. You can offend some people, including employees of your own organization. Um, but we believe that you know, if we believe in the cause, we just gonna have to go out and say it. And you know, we we may lose some, but we but we you know, those who actually share the same belief in us would believe in the organization more.、Um, so that's what we strive to do, if, you know, every time and going out there. So、um, I think this generation, at least here in Singapore, the last generation, like my generation, was about survival.、Okay. This generation is about meaning. I think the next generation is looking for meaning, and I think giving meaning to work and every day is is important. So now, is Gen Z the same all over the world? Is it pretty much the same traits, or as you begin to、um, expand globally, what do you have to think about in terms of catering to Generation Z in different cultures and different countries, or is it kind of the same? Um, so ex- exactly as an example just now, we operate in Singapore, Indonesia for our company.、Uh-huh. Singapore, I would say for Gen Z, is 75% meaning 25% um, profit. Um, Indonesia is probably the other way around, 75% um, survival. And in that case, truly, is they try to build a better life, and 25% meaning. So just a little bit balance shift. Yeah, I th- what to consider. 
Gotcha. Uh, what, so it's kind of like uh, growing up. So you've got your adolescence, your teenage years, your young adulthood, and then your maturity, and so on and so forth. I feel that uh, we've got uh, teammates from the Netherlands, from India, from Hong Kong, uh, a few other countries. And most of them who comes in at a certain age, between the ages of uh, maybe 20 to 25, you realize that if you build that bond with them, they will show their true self. And it's always almost the same. If it's between the ages of 19 to 25, they're always playful. So you know that they're playful. So I guess the point I'm trying to put here across here is that uh, if you know, if you can make them feel comfortable, and if you know who they truly are, you could guide them accordingly to what they, you need them to do. Because the way I, the, the, the methodology that I subscribe to is that they're not going to be there with you forever. They're going to be there with you for that. They're not going to, they're going to give you X amount of years in their youth, and then they're going to go back and or going to do something else. So for us, just make the best of it uh, at that point in time. And so, Ali, what are your numbers telling you? So I think, you know, if you look at it from a perspective of uh, technology, and uh, this is a mobile generation, everyone's on technology on mobile, and there's been platforms that have been created like Facebook, like Twitter, Instagram, that are global, right? You can be in America, you can be in Singapore, you can be in you know, China, and you have Weibo and WeChat, for example, WeChat. So, you know, these kind of platforms make this generation similar in that regard. Uh, for us as a business, uh, we are, you know, in the business of data. And with all these platforms, I mean, you know, with Fitbit, you, you can have data and measure, you know, how much you're sleeping, you know, how many steps you're taking. You know, with Facebook, you, you, you can measure attract, you know, popularity. Uh, same with Instagram, you know, with Tinder, you can measure attractiveness. So you're getting all of this data, and this is powerful data which brands are using at the end of the day uh, to market, to understand these consumers. Um, so there are similarities if you look at these platforms and the, and the consumers and the generation that uh, adapt to them. But there's a lot of differences too. Um, and there are differences by nationality, by region, and the Chinese, uh, you know, Gen Z is very different from the Japanese Gen Z, for example. So there are cultural uh, generational differences. And we do about you know, 20 different markets, work in 20 different markets. We're able to see what are the commonalities and then what are the, the differences. Now, eventually, I want to ask you the same question, but with a twist. So, you had a, a company that did something similar to yours in the United States and was bought by Google. Google. Yeah. So, how do you, if you're going to expand globally, how do you compete with something like that? Nice. Um, I'll touch <laughs> with both questions. I'll okay. touch with both questions. Okay. So, um, we deal with 3,000 influencers. Uh, that's who I manage, and a large percentage of them are from the Gen Z population, by the way. So 90% of my influencers are based in Singapore, and 10% are all around the world. So I've dealt with influencers almost every part of the world. So I see two unique traits of these influencers, regardless of where you are from, because I think social media kind of unites all of us, because when, when Trump says something, we would know the next day. It unites us and messages get passed around very quickly. So the two common traits uh, between uh, the Gen Z, I think, uh, that unites everyone on social media is number one, they're all looking for quick bite-sized information. Once Snapchat is popular in the US, very quickly in Singapore, it picks up. That quick bite-sized information, that live streaming, and that quick access to information, it's similar. The second thing that is very similar is how they are all very low in their attention span. It is so low in their attention span. Just talking about Singapore, just a couple of weeks ago, everyone was complaining about Artbox. Now everyone's complaining about a fire festival, and some of us has already forgotten how people has, you know, made a, a, there's a quarrel in, in in one of the hawker center where the guy shoved into an old man and there was a huge uproar on social media and all that. So the, the, the attention span is so low and we get flooded with so much information. And I think this, this represents a lot the Gen Z because we are all getting information too quickly actually. Um, and coming to your second question on how another influencer company can, can, we can compete with them. Uh, or we can actually be working together. 
is I think how, the same way on how social media unites the both of us. Because they would have um, access to influencers in another region and we would have in the Asia region. And I think I see a lot of ways we can actually collaborate. Okay. Yeah. Um, our time is up. I just want to reintroduce everyone. Um, Ali Mirza of Affluential, Darius Chung of 99.co, Vangeline Long of Kobe Global Technologies, and King Kwa of Salty Customs. Thank you, everyone, for sticking it out to the very end. And go have fun tonight. Thank you.